You got all these things. Tape and pins and pressure gauges and analyzers and... Now what? Hi and welcome to another episode of UTD Scuba Diving TV. Today, coming to you from lovely sunny Sweden, um, I'd like to take some time to talk to you about analyzation of your cylinders and a little bit of tip on how to get them filled and how to go about doing a proper analyzation. Now, this is not one of those videos like, hey, this is analyzation, you've been doing it all wrong all this time. Usually there are different ways of doing it. This is just um, our way of doing it. And uh, I think it's a nice and easy step-by-step -step way. So first of all, what do you need to properly analyze your gas. Obviously you need an analyzer, of course, but that doesn't cover it. You need some tape to mark the cylinders, you need some pen to mark on the tape, and uh, maybe you need a separate loose pressure gauge. Uh, very comes in handy if you're doing stages that don't have a rig mounted to them. Um, so gather all these things and put them into a box. Now, if you have one of these fancy um, analyzers, that's also Trimax analyzers and all other gadgets. This one from Divesoft is very nice because it does a lot of things. There's even a voltmeter in there. There's even uh, some calculations in there that can be made about MOD and all that sort of stuff. But a basic nitrox analyzer like this from Analux also suffices. Very simple, very durable and doesn't cost a lot of money. Uh, on a little side note, you can take a UTV uh, ratio deco class and you save money on a big expensive Trimix computer and you can actually buy an analyzer. <laughs> Joking aside, before all this you need to be able to film to fill your cylinder. So uh, tell the filling station what kind of gas you need and sometimes they have a system in place so ask what kind of system there is in place. Some people have labels they put on, some people ask you to put a piece of tape on, uh, just make sure to ask in advance. And on that note, if you know you're gonna need some exotic gases, like a special Trimix gas, ask if it's available or if they need to order it in advance. So if you're traveling, make sure you give them a notice well in advance so you don't come expecting to be getting Trimix fill and they're out of helium. So give them notice well in advance, it'll just help you out. When you deliver your, in this case, we'll use a twin set as an example, when you deliver your twin set and all the hoses are, are hanging and the lights are hanging, they're gonna be jostling around your twin set and risk of damages is gonna be great. So what I suggest you do is clean it up. Remove the right post and we'll come to that in a minute why we fill from the right post. And then you take all these hoses like your necklace hose and you put it around the manifold and you take your long hose and you put it around the manifold and you close up this belt so that at least it's not on the floor because if they set the twin set on the belt it'll bend, bend this buckle and then you take your crotch strap and you'll go all the way over the manifold like this now when you're carrying it nothing is dragging on the floor if you if you're concerned about the light if you have a long light cable you can even put that over the manifold underneath. In this case, it's not so long. So just make sure that everything is nice and tidy. That protects your gear. If you take care of your gear, your gear will take care of you. Now, you deliver it like this, they're gonna naturally search for this port because it's already open and available. If you have other gases that are in there, leave the analyzation label of the previous mix on it on top of whatever mark or tape or whatever you, they ask you to put on. Because that gives the blender a good idea of what's inside and what he needs to fill. So the more information you can give them, the better. Now, the reason we fill from the right post is especially in areas where maybe twin set diving or technical diving is not, very, uh, uh, it's not a very common thing. Um, many people they don't know about the manifold and what sometimes happen is they figure out okay we need to close all the valves. oh this one is open we need to close all the valves right 
and then we fill from this and they open and sometimes they even fill from both uh, they fill both and but this is closed now the reason we want this one open is now when we pick up the fill and you forgot to check this one as soon as you open this one to check the pressure gauge you'll see that this one hasn't been filled and then you open this and you hear the air rushing and now you've caught a mistake before it's too late so that's the reason why we fill from the right then we pick it up analyze and check the gases the pressure and the content at the center or the filling station where you actually picked up your gas because if there is a mistake or something's wrong you catch it there and they might be able to correct it also while you're at it just check if all the regs are still working and nothing got damaged or whatever and now we start analyzing we analyze from the left side now before we go and gather our analyzer and then jump into the analyzing of the gas do the other things that you know need to be done first and this is especially true if it's on a dive site or a dive boat where you're borrowing someone else's analyzer or the boats or setups analyzer because everyone's always hunting for the analyzer and then they're hunting for the tape so make sure you got your piece of tape and a pen now any tape will do uh, duct tape is fine painter tape is okay just be aware that the white painter tape usually comes away when it's coming into contact with water and that's not very good for the environment so the blue painter tape you can get at least you can get it in europe which is basically the stronger weatherproof painter tape it'll stick better and not get lost uh, so you don't lose your analyzation labels when you need it and you don't litter in the environment so that's very nice um, a better solution but they're harder to come by is electrical tape in this wide format um, electrical tape has the good uh, uh, adhesive and it doesn't leave a residue if you leave duct tape on too long it leaves a residue the same goes for painters tape it leaves a residue which becomes nasty so if you can get that electrical tape on the white format that will be absolutely best there are even some commercially made uh, tapes like this with the pre-marked uh, indicators and that's also very nice in this case we're going to use use the gaffer the information we need and see if i can show you is we're going to need in the middle a percentage of the gas we have to also know the pressure of the gas so we can check that out now we can check the pressure gauge and this actually shows 210 bar so that's what I know 210 bar the date is also interesting because then you know today is the 4th of August 4th of August it'll be me that will be diving and analyzing this gas so your initials are interesting now the next is the MOD top left corner and the actual content of the cylinder and that sand that content you'll get from the analyzation so now we take our tape place that back so other people can use it and we put the label on the cylinder now i personally put it on the left side of my twin set right there and it doesn't really matter if you put it on the left or when it goes to the twin set on the back or on the right side it doesn't really matter it's just i like to work on the left side it's the same side as the stages it's just something i've done always and now we're getting ready for the analyzation if there's some moisture in there quickly purge it out so there's nothing in there no debris and then we come to the part that makes a difference some analyzers have a fancy flow limiter like this one now that makes your job a lot easier because you just put the flow limiter inside open up the valve and this takes care of the perfect flow that the analyzer needs for analyzation a, a type like this actually doesn't have a flow limiter well it's it's very basic flow limiter but it requires that you adjust the flow on your cylinder a little bit before you do the analyzation so we're going to show you with this one first first step 
is to calibrate the analyzer. Now, calibration can be done with the normal atmospheric air. Don't blow into it. Don't suck into it. Don't dunk it in the water. Uh, whatever you do, don't blow into it, basically. If you have a known calibrated gas, like oxygen, for example, you can actually calibrate it with oxygen, which is very nice. Or if you have a calibrated air source, just pure air, you can calibrate it with that as well. Especially in areas with high humidity, it fluctuates a little bit. Um, but normal air is usually fine. And adjust the calibration to 20.9. And you can, in this case, you just dial it. Some others is just a calibration. Make sure to read your manufacturer's manual to know how to calibrate your own oxygen analyzer. And then we go about analyzing. Now, when we want to establish the flow on uh, on the on the valve, it's be the same as if you're blowing onto your hand. Like that amount of flow you feel. It should be the same amount of flow you feel coming from your valve. And do that before you put the analyzer in place. Because the, the membrane of the actual cell inside is very sensitive. So you don't want to go and, and do that to your cell analyzer. Because it'll break it eventually. So crack it open. So it's just about flowing. And it feels like you're blowing on your hand. And that's enough. And then you just put that little analyzer up here and you'll wait till the reading stabilizes and it takes a couple of seconds 20.9 so that's perfect because it was air we're just diving with air now so now you take your pen and you write 20.9 one decimal behind the um the comma and that's perfect 20.9 percent mod of air is 30 meters and now I'm ready. Now this gas is analyzed, I know the pressure, and everything is checked. Now you're ready to store your analyzer back. Um, the, especially this one is kind of rugged, but it's a very good idea if you've invested the money in buying one of these analyzers, to also invest the money in buying a box that is sort of rugged and, and waterproof. Um, you can see the cheap analyzer gets the cheap box and the expensive one gets, gets the expensive belly case. Um, so, but that's what it is, right? With regards to these ones, they're super simple. You turn them on, you calibrate according to the manual, and this flow limiter takes care of the rest. So, now you've analyzed your gas. Always super important to know what you're breathing, especially when you come from a new, uh, in a new area, at a new dive center, or an organization, or a place you don't know. If they're filling any other gases than air, if you see technical divers running around, stage bottles being handled, different gases being filled, a filling panel that looks complicated, always analyze your gas. Also, when you've just asked for air. You never know if someone made a mistake. So just analyze your gas, make sure you know what you're breathing, All right? So I hope you got something out of it. If you have any tips and comments how you actually uh, do your analyzation, leave them down in the comments below. If you have any questions, don't feel, uh, don't feel afraid to ask. And um, we're about to go in for a nice dive here. So uh, as always, stay safe, stay sharp, and see you out there.